So today's video is going to be a little different than any of the videos that I've done so far. Now, when I originally had started my channel, my whole goal was to get the word out there to get people aware and to be prepared for the unexpected, for something for unforeseen that we do not have a control over. And on today's video, we're going to talk about the Charlie Victor 19, the mental side of this with the, how should I put it, the whole aspect of the anxiety, the um, feeling of loss, the mental part of it, and everything else. So on that note, we're going to get going on that. <clears throat> so we sit back and we think about everything that's going on in this world um, there's so much stuff going on it's it's just ridiculous it's out of control and I believe the, the mental part of this um, with the anxiety and the sadness and everything else is going to outweigh the Charlie Victor 19 in the end. It'll be around a lot longer. I can say that from a personal experience. And that is the reason why I'm bringing this video to you is because on my channel I believe that for one, we all have to kind of stick together as a community. And for two, we also have to prepare ourselves, if you should say, for what may be coming or has already come to some of you. For me, it is here. Now, what I am talking about is the mental anxiety side of the whole situation. Now recently, um, my daughter and her husband had a baby. It's my first grandchild. Um, but I'm not basically able to travel and see my grandson. Uh, I live in Florida. And that was weighing very heavily on my heart. You know, when you have your first grandchild, um, all you want to do is hold it. You you want to be a part of the whole experience and you get the feeling that you know um, it makes you feel helpless it makes you feel um, like you're not a good parent um, it makes you feel um, a lot of different things and a lot of people me I'm included in this um, have a very hard time talking about your feelings and uh, your thoughts and things. Um, I've been married for quite a long time. Um, it gets difficult uh, talking to your spouse or maybe talking to your girlfriend, your boyfriend, um, whoever you need to talk to. Uh, you feel weak in a sense. And this is all stemmed from this whole situation that we're in. You know, we're under such restrictions. Uh, they don't want you going here. They don't want you doing this. Um, they, if you watch the news, any news station, it doesn't matter. Um, we're not going to get into the whole politics and everything else. But because I believe that on the flip side of all this, even once they quote say find a vaccine <clears throat> the mental and anxiety and the sadness um, is gonna far outweigh the virus itself I can't imagine what a lot of people have gone through in this country or in this world where their loved ones have passed away in the hospitals and stuff and they're just they weren't able to be there by their side i can't imagine that feeling 
of guilt that that puts on a human being. It has to be horrible. And my thoughts and prayers go out to every single one of those people because I can't imagine that. You know, we are so used to being able to do whatever we want, whenever we want, as long as you're following the, the laws, you know, and, uh, you know, go places, do things, visit people, the whole nine yards with no restrictions. That's why we live in the United States of America. That's why a lot of men and women have died for that flag that is right behind me. And what I'm trying to get out is if you're feeling this way or when you do feel this way, you are not alone in this whole concept of the feelings that you are going through. The emotions you're dealing with. It's very tough. It's not an easy thing to do. And um, the best thing that I could say is that you reach out to your wife, your spouse, um, boyfriend, girlfriend, family members, whoever, your close friend, whoever you can and talk to them about it and get it off your chest because it just builds up. And that's what has happened with me. <clears throat> now, as I have said, you know, I started my channel on the belief that we're all in this together. We all need to be prepared as preppers. We also, you know, there's more to it than, you know, prepping your food, prepping your supplies, um, you know, your emergency backup systems and all that, you know, that's all fine and dandy and that's something we all should be doing. But the mental part of it is, I think, the toughest part, especially when it hits home. Now, for me, you know, it's not being able to travel to see my grandson. Um, we know eventually, you know, we will get to that point, but it doesn't make it any easier at this point, if you follow what I'm saying. So the one biggest thing that I can say is when you start to get these feelings or something that starts to happen is try to open up to someone. It's not easy and the feelings suck. You know, you get the feeling you don't want to do anything. You don't, you don't, you don't care about anything, you know, and with all this that's going on, I'm sure a lot of people are in the same boat as me. And you sit back and you ask yourself why you do what you do. Um, that could be meaning from your job to, um, whatever it is. Um, you know, a lot of people would call that a midlife crisis. Maybe it is. I'm, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you exactly how I feel. And I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there that feel the same way. Uh, but unfortunately, in this day and age, <clears throat> no matter what you're doing, if you have a job and you are working, you're getting paid, um, the best thing for you to do is to keep on paddling down the river because right now isn't a time to be changing jobs because there's not a lot of jobs out there. There are companies that are hiring and stuff like that, but it isn't something that you really want to commit the rest of your life to. And I have had these thoughts, you know, I've been with my job for well over 26 years and, um, I've got about five more years till I can think about retiring. And so I'm kind of on the downside. <clears throat> but for a lot of you out there, if you have a choice on what you do, try to make it something that 
you like to do. Don't sit back and waste your life on the money. Take it from experience. But there's a reason why everything happens in this life. I'm a firm believer of that. There are certain circumstances that come along that we have no control over. And there are, are circumstances we do have control over at this point. Now, maybe down the road, depending on how this Charlie Victor 19 plays out, maybe they'll try to take away some of your control. Who knows? You know, there's just so much that is going on. And like I said before, I truly believe that in the end, the mental side, the anxiety, the sadness, um, the guilt, and everything else is going to live on way past whatever this Charlie Victor 19 does. Now, you know, they're talking about coming out with a vaccination for it to try to get it under control and they're fast tracking it. Um, <clears throat> but then again, you know, I mean, we are talking two things. You're in a political year. You know, um, it's a president year where you can vote for a president and the president's going to want something out there. Now, are they going to just fudge the test results from all these people to make it look like it's good so someone can say that, hey, you know, I came up with this? Who knows? But I do know is I will not be the first in line for a vaccination. I'll let some other people be the guinea pigs because there's plenty of them out there, people. I'm not going to sit there and shoot something into my body that you just don't know anything about. On the second hand, I think the government needs to really start paying attention to what the mental side of this is going to be as far as, like I said, the anxiety, the sadness, the guilt, and everything else on the back end of this whole pandemic that we are going through. But as far as why I'm doing this video is from what I've been going through and how mal I feel, you know, it, it brings you down. I mean, it just drops you, you know, right down to makes you feel like you're nothing. And after talking with some people and, um, you know, family members and my wife and everything else and getting it all off my chest, I will tell you, I felt a lot better. I, um, Setting at the beach also helps. I went down and uh, sat at the beach for a while, uh, just myself and the waves. You know, there really wasn't anybody out on the beach. I went early in the morning and, you know, there was hardly anybody there. So it was nice just to sit, just listen to the waves. So I would also say that, you know, if you have a place you like to go where you can really think and clear your mind, it's probably a good idea to take that trip. As long as you can do it safely. You know, we're all under these restrictions where we can't go out to eat, or you, if you do, you know, it's social distancing. You know, they want to open up all these bars here in Florida, which is just ridiculous. I mean, there's just no common sense in play here. Um, we, we want to get this thing under control so we can try to go back to a normal life and not, you know, blow the doors wide open on it. Just think about it. You're going to open up a bar. You're going to have a bunch of drunk people. Do you really think they're going to wear their mask and have social distancing? They're drunk. Common sense. But hey, they'll probably do it. So I just wanted to do a quick video 
<clears throat> it's probably not too quick. It's probably going to be a 15, 20 minute video. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see what the time says on the little GoPro there. But the biggest thing to take from this people is, is if you're starting to get those feelings and you're starting to feel, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. When you start feeling, you know, like your world's closing in on you and you don't have any control and you miss your family and those type of things, you need to reach out and talk to somebody. Um, because it's it's tough, you you know, I mean I'm a big guy, you know I'm six one, I go two hundred and you know forty some odd pounds, you know, but it brings you right down, you know. I, it doesn't matter how big you are, how strong you think you are, or anything else, your mind can be your worst enemy. So make sure that you're opening up and talking to somebody. So on that note, my name is Charles. This is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I'd like to thank everybody for everything that you're doing for my channel. I am a small channel and I'm slowly growing. I'm getting there. You know, like I keep saying, this isn't a, a marathon, it's a race. And what I do, I don't do to grow my channel to have a million views and everything else. I do just to bring some good quality information to help everyone in the community out and that's for me that's what it's all about I just want to make sure that the people that are in the community you know are, are doing the things that need to be done and being prepared for whatever may come in the future and let's hope that it's a very good future and all our preps will be put off for another rainy day but something tells me that's not going to happen. So, on that note, until next time, I will catch you all on the flip side.